In recent years, Reddit has without a doubt become one of the most accessible and active platforms available on the internet. With an estimated 1.7 billion users having access to the platform, it has become inevitable that some less than light-hearted content will emerge from it. Today, I present to you the first part of a series where we dive into the darker, grim and more sinister side of the Reddit community. Before we begin the countdown however, I would like to warn everyone watching that the following topics we'll be pursuing will not be very PG friendly, as they discuss violence, drug use, sexual references and just downright disturbing content that I feel like warning you about before you see for yourself. And perhaps one of the scariest things about today's subject is that all of them are supposedly true. Number 5 comes from a now deleted user on the Let's Not Meet subreddit sharing a disturbing find they had made during what seemed like an innocent urban exploration. I live in North Wales, UK. For anyone who has had the pleasure of visiting, it truly is a beautiful place to live, though for an adolescent boy it is certainly lacking in things to do. As a result, my friends and I would often find ourselves mindlessly exploring areas of countryside and coastline. Despite it being quite sparsely populated, in comparison to the closest cities, there is a dual carriageway running right along the coast from Wales into England. Also, train tracks run alongside this road for most of its course, occasionally passing overhead via a small cement bridge. Anyway, there was one night a few years ago, when about four of us randomly decided to try and explore the inside of one of these bridges, as one of the group had observed a manhole cover nearby, which we believed to be the entrance. On closer inspection, we discovered that several tools would be required in order to gain entry. We returned with the necessary equipment and proceeded to unbolt the cover. This had to be done stealthily, as the train track was right beside us. Not close enough to be of any danger, but definitely a sufficiently small distance to cause panic for any train driver. And panic usually means police. It wasn't long before we had removed the heavy steel disc and had started descending the ladder down into the structure. Once we had all safely reached the bottom, we decided to progress to the other side. At this point, we are totally confined into the narrow space that leads into the main area. If you are confused as to what the hell this bridge is supposed to be, you probably should be because it was rather peculiar. I mean, I would have never known there was even an inside had we not found a manhole. So, as we squeeze and crouch, and at one point scrape along our bellies to the other side of the structure, there is a growing sense of claustrophobia between us. The distance from one end to the other is surprisingly long, but by the halfway point you could look down through the narrow gaps onto the motorway below. This was actually pretty cool, which helped keep us calm in a strange way. At this point, apart from the mild discomfort and confinement, we were still just a group of guys on an adventure this was about to change dramatically. No more than a few meters beyond halfway, one of us claimed they could see some object in the distance at the far end. Slightly hesitantly, we agreed to investigate, which was a bad move. I reached the end first, and let me tell you, I have never felt the same sense of dread before or since. In front of me was a fold-away chair positioned facing a wall. On the wall was a partially torn page from a newspaper or a magazine showing a fully naked lady in an erotic position. The reason I don't just refer to it as is because something was different about it. I can't put my finger on it but it seemed more sinister than sexy if that makes any sense. More disturbingly, the eyes of the woman on display had been cut from the page, removed with precision, not just hastily ripped off. The scene that lay before us had rendered us completely speechless, and an overpowering sense of panic could be felt collectively. That was when we found the, the horrendous, gut-wrenching, blood-drenched. Needless to say, we got the fuck out of there as fast as humanly possible, smashing our knees and shins against the sharp cement edges that lined the path to the ladder by which we had entered. Of course, we were all praying to God that the manhole hadn't been resealed, as it was impossible to tell until you reached the ladder itself. Thankfully, the exit route was clear and we promptly dashed as far away as our legs could carry us. Opie then goes to assure the readers that this find was completely out of the norm, given the ordinary and innocent state of his hometown. 
I sometimes think, though not recently as I had more or less forgotten about that night entirely, about the person who climbs down into that bridge and navigates through the darkness to sit facing a wall and do god knows what that ends up with a full of blood. You honestly couldn't envision a more surreal situation. It has just come to my realization that what we unearthed that night has not once been uttered to another soul. As a naive teenager, it was the type of thing you just wanted to forget, but thinking about it we probably should have let the police know, or at least someone about what was down there, because it wasn't the doings of a healthy minded individual. According to OP, this incident happened a few years back, and considering the creepiness of the situation, they haven't alerted anyone about it. But seeing as he was now a few years older, he was looking to go back and explore underneath the bridge once again. Unfortunately for him, his friends weren't so happy with the idea. Luckily for everyone following the post however, OP did go back and revisited the bridge, and provided us with a lot more pictures, giving us some more insight into what it was actually like. The photos are without a doubt spine chilling, but there are a few of them that stick out more than the others. Like this crime scene tape, a knife and the chair he had mentioned in his previous post. Also, one of the pictures provided contains a date, more specifically 1997, suggesting that this has been here for quite a while. His last entry contains this beautiful view they stumbled upon their exit, and both Opie and I hope that this will brighten your mood despite all the creepiness that you just witnessed. It is indeed quite haunting to think of what could have been going on underneath that bridge, and personally I would never want to come close to such a place, so I'm glad this encounter at least had a happy ending. Our fourth entry tonight comes from Ask Reddit, where a user asked what is the most WTF thing you have seen in real life. One of the comments would stick out, with a user detailing their horrifying experience during their time in South Africa. When I lived in South Africa, I traveled a lot with a Christian missionary slash humanitarian aid worker. He handled the spiritual stuff. I tended to work more with the local people, helping them with non-spiritual issues. In July of 2010, we went to a village in the middle of nowhere. As soon as we stepped out of the truck, we knew something was wrong. We hadn't been able to contact our guy in the village all day, and there was no one around us at all. Pete and I went from house to house, looking for well, anyone, but everywhere was completely empty. Eventually, we saw a figure run around the corner of a building on the far side of the village. It was a young woman, stark naked, running straight for us. Her arms were flailing, and sh she was running like an animal, occasionally dropping on all fours, then back on her feet. As she got closer, Pete told me to get back in the truck, then screamed at me to get to the truck. I'd seen this guy watch a witch doctor burn a dozen chickens alive and not bat an eyelid, so when he lost his shit I knew it was serious. I closed the truck door as she reached us. She was covered in blood, there were cuts and slices all over her face, arms and breasts. One of her ears was missing as well, I think. There was a lot of blood, her teeth were bloody and she had a look in her eye of absolute untamed rage. The screeching sound she made is unlike anything I've heard before. I can still hear it so vividly in my mind. Looking into her face, seeing her wide, psychotic eyes and gaping mouth as she made that unholy sound froze me in my seat. Pete had started the truck and already started reversing up the dirt track, but she followed. He turned the car, then sped off up the track as she followed us. She didn't keep up, obviously, but for a while I thought she was coming to. I've never seen someone run that fast in bare feet. The journey back to our base town was almost silent. I spent most of it concentrating on the sound of my own breathing and the rumble of the road. I asked Pete what that was and what we should do. He said the girl was no doubt insane, had a psychotic break or something, but the locals would have immediately thought her possessed. If she hadn't killed herself, the other villages would within days. He suggested they had gathered in one house for safety. Now, this story is extremely creepy in itself, but what stands out the most is the information that followed afterwards. This happened in Eastern Cape, which I would argue is the darkest, wildest and most bizarre part of the country. 
Strange things happen there a lot, and often just get buried or picked up by one of the crazy tabloids like the Mercury or subsequently ignored or written off. There are vast swathes of grassland punctuated by the odd settlement without any adequate law enforcement. A lot of people live in these isolated settlements and will only leave to work or to get food. Many spend their whole lives in the village of their ancestors, as do their children and so on. Yes, we called the police, or rather Pete did. The officer said we will look into it. We never heard about it again. South Africa has some very developed, civilized, westernized areas, but there are enormous parts of this country which have remained almost untouched for decades. The further you go from Joburg or Cape Town, or even East London, our nearest city, the more rural and strange things can become. I'm not saying that all of rural South Africa is like this. A lot of the villages we went to were nice, simple settlements where the people welcomed us, gave us food, gobbled at us for being white and so on. But some were more sinister. We eventually got in touch with our guy a day later. Pete asked him if everything was alright. He said we had a bad presence in the village, it is now gone. I don't know for sure what happened, but I can guess based on what Pete said. Pete's been back once since, and they seemed fine. He told me he didn't ask about the girl as he didn't know what had happened, and he didn't want them to react. I don't think he wanted to know. Afterwards, OP goes to talk about some of his more unsettling encounters during his time in South Africa, but concludes that none of them could ever top the incident he just described. Unfortunately, there is no way to prove this is real, but many have argued that the way it was written and the amount of details given makes it more likely for it to be a true encounter. As for what exactly was wrong with the girl, we would likely never find out. But based on the nature of the people described in the story, I would say anything goes. When we go camping or on holiday, we usually do so to escape the stress and responsibilities of our daily life. But what we seem to forget is that the darkest corners of reality often find themselves in the places we least expect. That is the case in our third entry today, when a redditor asked the following question. Hikers and backpackers of reddit, what is the weirdest or creepiest thing you found while hiking? Someone else then chimes in to tell an unnerving yet heartbreaking story. My friends and I found a 22 year old girl, face down in the mud, both legs broken with compound fractures. She had no cell phone, no water, no food, and nothing to keep her warm. Her friend was dead. A little backstory. My two friends and I were hiking in a pretty popular spot in our area. It's a 150 feet waterfall that takes about 45 minutes of uphill hiking to get to. We decided to go bouldering around the bottom of the waterfall. There are various little pools and boulders where the water runs off from the waterfall. This bouldering trail is not on the main trail, and not many hikers have a veer off of the main trail. When we found her, obviously we called 911 and gave her any supplies we had. Eventually a helicopter showed up and they flew her to the nearest hospital. Turns out she was hiking with her friend the night before when they both fell off of the waterfall. Her friend must have gone to get help, but unfortunately died less than 100 yards away from where we found the girl. So no one knew she was hurt or that she was even there. It's a miracle she was still alive and mind-blowing to think what she had gone through when we found her 20 hours later. Obi then links an article about the incident to prove the truthfulness of his story and a few images from when the girl was rescued. Now, what makes this post even more unsettling is the realization that the girl can actually be seen in some of their hiking photos from before they knew she was even there. Now, I'm gonna show the photos, but please keep in mind some of you might find these extremely disturbing. Although not very creepy in itself, it is a sad story and a harsh reminder to how fragile life can be and how you can go from enjoying a nice hiking trip to fighting for your life in just a matter of seconds. Also, the post is quite old, but from what I read, the girl is on her way to make a full recovery and hopefully both her and her family can recover and move past this painful incident.
At number 2, we have a reminder that life is often more shocking than we thought and that the horrors of it can sometimes come from our safe and well-trusted home. One year ago, on the Legal Advice subreddit, a user would make the following post. I think my boyfriend has been drugging me to make me forget things. He is a doctor. I think my boyfriend has been secretly drugging me for a while now and is gaslighting me. I know this is going to be hard to explain, but I have been having gaps in my memory that I have been explaining away as being tired, or overworked, or whatever else. I was going to ask my boyfriend about it, since he's a doctor, but then I started to notice that this seems to happen when I go on dates with him. I know it must be crazy, but I have woken up with dry on my breasts several times with no memory of the night before. I know it's him as... Well, I won't get into specifics, but he likes that kind of thing more than any other guys would. The first time it happened was when we were drinking and I wrote it off as too much to drink. We get drunk and have sex all the time, so it's not a big deal to me. But then there were a few times when I know we were not drinking. I decided to break up with him over it, only to suddenly find myself on a date with him a few days later. I had not yet had the conversation to break up with him, but planned on it next time I talked to him. I remember being at the restaurant, but nothing before that. Both of our cars were in the parking lot too, so I was confused. I decided to play along when he asked me to come back to his place, and after three days at his place, I remembered everything so I was starting to trust him again. Knowing he was an ENT, I know it won't be his forte, but he is a doctor. I was going to ask him about my issues when he randomly pointed out to these red bumps on my thigh and said I should be treating those sores. I had completely forgotten they were there, these little red bumps that looked like needle injections that got infected. I got so freaked out he mentioned them that I decided to leave. The next day he came over to check on me and I remember waking up in bed with more dried on my chest. Then today he met me for lunch saying we had agreed to meet. I never agreed to meet with him and would never want to. He does this all the time, saying we agreed to do something I have no memory of. I am sick and tired of it and want him punished. This has started to affect my work life as well as I start to get paranoid when I see a boss walk into a room after making eye contact with me. I get paranoid that they are about to fire me. My friends also state I have been acting strangely and out of character. I have even begun to lose sleep and sleepwalk when I do. Is there a way to have blood work done to see what kind of drug he's using on me? I don't want the police to blow me off and push me away as some crazy lady, so I want to be damn sure when I go to the police. As expected from a post like this, users jumped in to give their opinions and advice on the situation. One of the things that stuck out the most is the fact that both OP and her boyfriend's cars were outside the restaurant during one of their dates which was highly unusual seeing how normally they would only use one vehicle when going on a date. As the post progressed, many came to the conclusion that the most natural cause of the incident was bed bugs, and many experts and concerned users came forward to give their advice on how to get rid of them. However, what makes this post creepier is one of the pinned comments. OP, the mods received a message from a verified physician who claims that bed bugs cannot cause the symptoms you described in your post. He or she strongly suggests that you visit a doctor for help, which seems to be prudent advice. Unfortunately, this is where the post comes to an end, as OP seems to have vanished and stopped giving any sort of updates. Of course, this has made a lot of people very suspicious, but a lot of the comments on the original post have been deleted, which makes this even more confusing. Now, I was able to find another discussion on Ask Reddit where someone mentioned the story again, and there, a user by the name of Krelm01 came forward to say the following. I was actually there when this went down. What happened was she made this post. The post got loads of attention and hundreds of comments. Then this one random dude posts that it could be bedbugs. OP responds to that post and that post alone. The response was conveniently something like, oh I found bedbugs, I definitely had bedbugs, solved. Also, the response was made within like one or two minutes of the commenter, and again, that was the only response on the whole thread. Doctor comes in and says he's never heard of bedbugs causing these symptoms, no one has, it doesn't happen. Mods make a post about it, OP deletes their account, commenter goes on a big tangent about karma not meaning anything to them, why would they lie, this is dumb, I'll delete my account to prove it, and deletes his account. 
So, this all just goes between multiple comments about bed bugs, OP presumably coming to that conclusion as well and resolving it, versus mods claiming a doctor said bed bugs cannot be the cause of it. Sadly, we'll never know, as most accounts involved in the story have been deleted, so all we're left with is pure speculation. Our final entry today comes from the Black Ops subreddit, which is a place dedicated to investigating government operations from around the world. The post begins with the following question. Why would there be 30-ish Wi-Fi networks seemingly emanating from under a concrete pad? Recently, I lived on a semi-urban farm property for a few months, and I noticed some very unusual things that I won't get into here. What I'd like to know is what reason there might be for somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 to 30 low-strand Wi-Fi networks, all with exactly the same signal strength, peaking at the same point location to be seemingly emanating from underneath a concrete pad which is supposed to be simply covering gravel and dirt. To clarify, I used Wi-Fi analyzer to ensure that it wasn't just a coincidental situation where lots of neighborhood networks happen to have similar signal strength due to the distances they were from their sources. I walked in concentric circles with Wi-Fi analyzer running and the further I got from the point location on the concrete pad mentioned above, the weaker the signals became. OP then goes to mention that the signals degraded in proportion to the distance from the place he was at, meaning that the Wi-Fi signals could only belong to the property he was staying at and weren't part of the neighborhood. Also, I used a Seek Thermal Imaging camera to check out the peak signal strength point location on that concrete pad, and the temperature at that point was about 30 degrees Fahrenheit, hotter than the surrounding concrete. I drilled a hole through that part of the pad, and drilled a couple other holes randomly at different spots on that same concrete pad. I poured water down all the holes, and only the one at the peak signal strength location would drain and drain without filling up. Now, as expected, the post has piqued pretty much everyone's interest, and they all jumped on board to theorize on what could be going on. Fortunately for us, OP has been very active and responding to comments, giving us a bit more insight. For example, we know this is happening in Hawaii, and that apparently his neighbor is one of the wealthiest people in the state. Also, the whole mountain he was situated next to used to be a military area during and after World War II. OP then adds, I noticed a truck making multiple late night trips for many days, removing lots of busted up new looking concrete from the neighbor's city trash bins. The property I lived on and that neighbor's property are leaseholds, held by the same person. I've also recently connected my old boss to eBay accounts selling faulty hard drives and faulty electronics for strange prices. The buyer feedback is very bizarrely enthusiastic and there are lots of disturbing mentions of very happy kids and no fakes. The post ends with Opie wondering whether or not he has stumbled upon a human trafficking or... There are also some photos attached, but seeing how the posts come to an end, the mystery pretty much dies along with it. Or does it? The year is 2016. The US presidential election is taking place, and both Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton are fighting for the title of President of the United States. Suddenly, a new conspiracy would send theorists down a massive rabbit hole when WikiLeaks would begin publishing the private emails of one John Podesta, which was a campaign chairman for Hillary Clinton at that time. Now, there were a lot of emails that got leaked, and most of them were quite ordinary, but a few details would stick out to people more than others. For example, if you type in the word pizza, you get 149 results. That means the word pizza has been used over a hundred times in a campaign manager's email. This had a lot of people speculating as to what the fuck exactly was so interesting about pizza that made these emails happen. So, people came to the conclusion that pizza was one of the many code words used to describe something more bizarre. Once again, there is no valid proof to verify any of this, but a lot of people believe this is what the code words represent. If we go even further, we can clearly see that more and more of these code words pop up, such as walnut sauce being used a ton of times in the same leaked emails, 
or this one where they mention dreaming about a hot dog stand in Hawaii, which as we know is the same state where the reddit post took place. So OP mentioned that he linked his boss to this eBay account under the name of CheesyBay, which supposedly sells faulty hard drives and makes mentions of happy kids. Now I had a look through his account and can confirm there are indeed a ton of positive reviews, but I haven't seen any mentions of kids and it looks like he's selling a lot more than just hard drives. So I did some digging of my own and was able to find out some more information about this boss. Now, for privacy reasons, I won't be giving out real names, but if you look into this hard enough, you will see his name pops out quite often. First of all, this guy has a lot of aliases. He goes by DF, DS, and BS, but for now, let's refer to him as DS. So, how does he tie into this whole mystery? Well, the first instance I was able to find was going through the Hillary Clinton emails, where at one point there is a mention of a private meeting with 1DS, which you have to take my word for that this is the same person. Digging some more, I also found an article where DS gives his side of the story regarding the OP and the Reddit post. Now, I would show you the article itself, but this DS individual has completely doxed OP, going so far as to share his real name, his workplace and so on. I will be linking the article in the description of the video, but if I were to show you I would have to blur out almost every sentence and that just wouldn't be convenient for any of us. So instead I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of what's explained in the article. In 2015 DS hired OP, which was a consultant for distilleries at the time. OP lived in an apartment near the distillery doing work for DS. Apparently, after some time working there, OP became paranoid and made the reddit post that I just showed you. The post then caught the attention of different investigators after hacked emails from DS's account showed that he was in communication with a booker from Komei Ping Pong, which is a pizza place that most theorists believe to be some sort of hideout from where this operation is taking place, but more about that later. DS then goes to mention he has a Facebook page, which is the BS alias I also mentioned. For the rest of the article, DS goes to explain that during his time there, OP became more and more paranoid and thought someone working for the government was spying on him. According to him, the high-powered cable lines OP was worried about are nothing more than transmission lines. Furthermore, DS states the following. I found some weird stuff in his apartment. He took apart the ceiling fan in his room because he thought someone was spying on him. In his bathroom, in his medicine cabinet was a clear plastic bag full of foil plastic pills that I didn't recognize. I looked up the primary use for these pills and it was some kind of treatment for heroin addiction. DS claims that after the incident, OP just up and vanished and so far he is gone without a trace and he believes that his paranoid tendencies are all due to heavy drug use. Now in the article we have a screenshot of the supposed leaked email I mentioned before and the article even confirms that it is in fact an email sent to DS but he claims he doesn't remember what it is but it may be about a Craigslist ad. In the email, we have this picture of Mr. Potato Head, which DS claims he uses it for some of his accounts. So we go over to Facebook and type in this BS alias I mentioned before, and we come up with this profile that uses the same Mr. Potato Head picture we've just seen in the email. So we can confirm this is the same guy that we just talked about, and perhaps there is nothing unusual about this account, however something did stick out while I was reading his About Me page. I became the largest provider of used cheese and cheese substitutes in the nation, and it wasn't long before Cheese Bay was shut down. Presently, I reside in Hawaii, collecting recyclables and tending my candy wrapper garden. Yeah, another direct reference to not only another code word, but to the eBay account mentioned before. I should also mention that in the interview, DS claims he doesn't own the Cheese Bay account and has no connection to it whatsoever. So really all we're left with is going back and forth between this evidence, but ultimately it won't lead anywhere. I also mentioned the Komei Ping Pong Pizza Place, which is believed to be some sort of hideout for a... Why exactly? Well, there are a lot of reasons and speculation behind that. Let's take for example the disturbing photos of kids being taped, uploaded to their Instagram page. And yes, this is an actual photo on an actual Instagram page. 
Also, also, I recently watched a Netflix documentary on Jeffrey Epstein, which some of you may know as the billionaire sex offender. I won't spoil anything, but this is what comes up during the documentary. Now, I would love to go into details about how this connects to cults and Satanism and all that, or how the Pizza Place's logo looks fairly similar to the FBI handout on the but there are so many details to this, I feel like my head's gonna explode and I'll probably be kidnapped and tortured before that can happen. So I'm gonna wrap things up for now, as I feel like we've already covered plenty of ground. I also have to admit that I am just slightly paranoid about making this video, but hey, if you don't hear from me in a while, you know what happened. Although seeing how often I upload you guys would probably never even notice. Oh shit. <laughs> but nah, seriously, this conspiracy is a bit mind-blowing and what's perhaps even more incredible is how every video, every subreddit, and every Twitter post regarding it have been deleted, gone, vanished. They even have a fucking wiki page dedicated to just slandering this theory and calling it fake, but they never even came forward to prove or at least try to give some credible evidence or just talk about the bizarre emails you just saw. Now, that being said, there is also no direct proof that there is actually something shady going on you know, apart from the hot dogs and pizza and cheese and walnut sauce, what the hell? <laughs> but anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and if you want to see more of Reddit and its sinister side, please leave a like and let me know what you think of these topics down in the comments. I would absolutely love to hear everyone's thoughts and opinions, especially on this last topic we just talked about. And with that being said, I hope everyone is staying safe, I love you and bye bye.